So please stick around for that. Um, they have prepared and been working since earlier this morning, and um, so they would like to uh, have you help them go to New Orleans. So there'll be a free will offering and, um, and delicious food, and you get to see our high school youth at work um, serving the church breakfast this morning. So uh, please stick around for that. Um, let's see. There's a adult study started on Wednesday, and it's a great group. Um, my understanding was we actually even ran out of books. So I ordered more. They are here. So if you're one of those who missed out on a book and was waiting for them to arrive, they are here. So um, see me or get in touch with Pastor Phil. He's around here somewhere. Um, he knows where the books are, too. And Last Supper is this Wednesday. So we'll be having more Easter fun with the kids. And then confirmation begins again at 6 o'clock. And I think that's it. Please um, look ahead. You've got your tidings. Read about some of the plans we have for uh, Earth Day coming up in the middle of April. We're going to have uh, acknowledge it in our worship service and then also have a trash pickup event that Sunday, April 21st. And so you're welcome to join us for that as well. Um, and Larry Bowen has a quick announcement for you about next week's gift shop. I would like to announce Sunday after worship service, a uh, next door neighbor of ours, Libby Slappy, who is president of the Friends of the Library Association in Cedar Rapids, is going to be here to present information about the new West Side Library. The Land Library is going to be replaced by a new building. If you're familiar with the lot across from the post office on Wiley, that's where that's going to be. And she has some information for us, and a few of us think, with the direction we would like to take our church, it's a golden opportunity for us to look at possibilities to do things for the library. Let me just mention three things about that. One of them is that the area has the most kids under five years old in the city of Cedar Rapids. Number two, it has the most single parent families in the city of Cedar Rapids. Number three, that is the area where the immigrant people are placed when they come to Cedar Rapids. I hope you'll extend your visit to this church next Sunday so you can hear Libby. I guarantee you, you'll enjoy it. And she'll have a lot of pictures of the library and give you a lot of information. Thank you.
pay thanks for what God has done for us. This lesson, lesson is from the fourth chapter of Acts, the believer's common life, Acts 4, 32 through 35. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them. For as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold, they laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as had need. This is the word of the Lord. The second lesson is from the first and second chapters of 1 John, walking in the light. 1 John 1 through chapter 2, 2. 
We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testified to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you may also have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not know what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we, if we say that we have not sinned, we have made him a liar, and his tr word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. According to John, the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Please, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Peace be with you. <laughs> thank you. There you go. All right. Well, thinking about peace, probably one of the first phrases that came to my mind was rest in peace. Now, that's not normally something we're thinking about when we're thinking about resurrection and new life, resting in peace. And what does that, does that statement say to us about our culture and the world we live in? Because we use that when someone has died. Rest in peace. So does that mean we have to die to finally achieve any peace? 
We do live in a world of chaos and conflict, a world that's full of anger and distress where there are wars taking place. And we have our own lives full of things that aren't very peaceful. Busyness, schedules, double and triple books sometimes, trying to figure out how to get from here to there when there's only just one of us. But Jesus uses that word, peace, peace be with you. And if he was speaking in Hebrew, then he would have used the word shalom, shalom. Now that word is a little bit different than the word that we think of as peace. In the Hebrew language, shalom means wholeness completeness. So in that case, peace isn't um, the lack of all of these things going on, but it's a wholeness, a completeness. It is a, a way of being and moving and living in the world. So Jesus uses the word shalom. It's more than calm and quiet. It's more than a lack of conflict. Jesus is saying to the disciples, be whole, be complete. The Gospel of John starts with the words, in the beginning. Right? In the beginning was the word. And that's meant to take us back. Back to um, the creation. To in the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth. Take us back to Genesis. And what happens in Genesis but God breathes. God breathes and there is life. Breath, breathing, the breath of life. The Holy Spirit moving over the waters, taking part in God creating a world that is good, that is complete, that is whole. Shalom, a world of shalom. And this connects us back this Easter evening, with the words of Jesus and him breathing on the disciples, breathing on them, giving them that breath of shalom, the breath of life, his life. It wasn't that long ago that we were hearing his words from the cross and how he breathed his last. But here he is. Here is Jesus among them, in the midst of their fear, their worry, their um, just not knowing what's going to happen next, Jesus comes in and breathes on them, gives them the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of wholeness and completeness, giving them his life. Well, if you think about it then, that's what Jesus' death, life, and resurrection are meant to restore. They're meant to restore shalom. They're meant to restore peace in the world, not just in the terms of no conflict or no war, but peace in relationships, peace between people. Peace between us and all of creation, the whole world. We heard in Acts about how the people shared what they had. They brought their community together to completeness, to wholeness. Those that didn't have what they needed now had enough. The community was made complete. And we hear in 1 John, the final words of 1 John in that reading, where Jesus came for the whole world, the whole world, for everyone. And that's a completeness, not just you or me, not just Gloria Day, not just the ELCA, not just America, but all of us, the whole world world. We think about breath. Breath is connected 
to peace. I mean, think about that because what happens when you're kind of worked up and what's one of the first things someone says, right? Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Ground yourself to the stuff of life. Breathe in God's life and love for you. So let's take a deep breath. Can you do that? Breathe in. Breathe out. One more. Breathe in. Breathe out. One more. Three for the Trinity. Breathe in. Breathe out. When we breathe, we breathe in new life. And we imagine exhaling out of ourselves, blowing out air that is filled with the things that would steal our breath. We breathe out carbon dioxide, right? We couldn't just breathe that. We know we can't. We need to breathe the air full of oxygen. And so we're breathing out the stuff that if it was all we had to breathe, we would, we would suffocate. It would steal our breath. It would steal our life. It would steal the, whole, the wholeness and the shalom, take it right out of our bodies and our spirits and our minds. But instead, we breathe out those things that would hold us down, hold us back, make us broken, make us incomplete, and breathe in the life, the shalom, the peace, the Holy Spirit that Jesus brings to us. It's the breath of resurrection. It's Easter breath. It's breath that is new life. It's breath that is shalom, peace. Peace be with you. When I said that first thing, you all responded. And that is more, I think, about what the word peace means in our lives. It's more the idea of what shalom is. Peace be with you and also with you. We often begin and greet one another with the Lord be with you, right? And you would say again, yes, and the Lord also be with you. We are wishing one another Jesus, all that Jesus is and all that Jesus gives to life, our lives together and our lives as his beloved. And so we say that as a greeting. And then we leave one another. We leave one another with a sign of peace. With shalom. Peace be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you and also with you. And we shake hands or we fist bump or we elbow bump, whatever, you know, the, but we touch one another somehow. We share life, we interact, and we wish one another the peace that Jesus first gave to us that only he could give. We begin with the Lord be with you. We end with peace be with you. Really, really one and the same, just different words. Not a social nicety, right, but a hope a hope for our relationship with one another and for the kind of peace and wholeness that we can take out into the world and create relationships with others in our community, our neighbors, and our family, at school, at work, across the globe, and with all of creation completeness, wholeness, shalom. Take another deep breath. Imagine what it is you need to breathe out. Breathe in resurrection life. Breathe out that which would steal life from you. 
Jesus' resurrection life comes to us today in this assembly, in our communion with one another, in our celebration of baptism, and our uh, shouts of hallelujah, and Christ is risen. Jesus' peace, Jesus' shalom is here with us to come to us, to rest on us, and also to go with us. Go with us everywhere we go and to share then with the world. Not just a word, not just a friendly handshake, not just the absence of the craziness of life, but a way of being, a way of living in this world that is almost and not yet what God wants it to be, what God hopes for it to be. And so we go out with that peace, breath of life, shalom, and we share it first with one another and then with everyone. Amen.
have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you shalom.